Hello and welcome to Red Risks Media. This is a live event, things can go wrong. Please stick with us while we try and sort some of those gremlins out. We live stream to LinkedIn, to YouTube and to Twitter, sometimes to Facebook. So please do join us on these live events. We'd welcome you to subscribe to our newsletter. No spam, I promise. It's only about the live events that are coming up. Now, enough of that. Let's just get on with the show. Hello, hello, hi everyone, hi everyone, hello the world, and again Tuesday evening, and we have Red Risks. Today I have a very special guest, Professor Tim Marsh, and we're going to talk about behavior-based safety system. And I divided our interview into four major parts. I'm going to ask Ms., uh, Professor Tim Marsh, what is BBS? And then slowly, slowly to go into the practical aspects, how he understands why some companies fail in implementing BPS systems. Then I would like to ask Tim Marsh to talk about his new book, Definitive Guide to BPS, and maybe share some practical experience, success stories of BPS. So let's talk and let's find out and let maybe introduce Tim Marsh. Tim Marsh was one of the team leaders of the original UK research into behavioural safety in construction in the early 1990s. He is one of only a few chartered psychologists who is also a chartered fellow of IOSH. Tim is considered a world authority on the subject of behavioural safety, safety leadership and organisational culture. He was awarded a President's Commendation in 2008 by the International Institute of Risk and Safety Management and was selected to be their first ever Specialist Fellow in 2010. Tim was also made a Visiting Professor at Plymouth University in 2015. He has worked with more than 400 major organisations around the world, including Apple, the European Space Agency, the WHO and the UN. Tim has presented to the European Conference Board and was an expert witness at the Safety, Culture and Management of Change Expert Forums at the Cullen Inquiry, Ladbrook Grove. Tim is the author of several books, including Organised Wellbeing, Definitive Guide to Behavioural Safety, to name but a few. So without further ado, let's welcome on the show, Professor Tim Marsh. Good evening, Tim. So, so happy to have you. How are you? I'm, I'm fine, thank you. But it's a stressful day today with Microsoft and, and uh, phone lines and things. But um, it's lovely to be here, Jeanette. Thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, I remember our last meeting. It was 2005, <laughs> Monaco. Uh, on a beach, I believe. Beach, yes. <laughs> are you so, sure you want to tell everybody about that right now? That seems... Uh... <laughs> yes. Um, so nice to have you here and we're going to talk about behavioural safety and we do have different listeners, audience, some of them professionals, practitioners and maybe some of them just starting their journey in health and safety and for them, Tim, BBS, what is BBS? How do you understand BBS? What would you say to them? Uh, uh, well, uh, there's not an easy answer to that because what people mean by BBS uh, differs hugely um, depending on who's providing the service um, and who's, who's uh, you know, um, who's running the program. So uh, in, in, in the book, you know, I, I did, it was a few years ago now, actually, Jeanette, that the book, uh, Definitive Guide, a uh, provocative title to try and start a debate, not not because I thought it was. Um, and, and, I, and I said, well, you know, there are lots of different types of BBS that people would say is BBS. I mean, the most obvious one, I think, is the simplistic, you know, uh, like my business partner, Jason Anker. Um, you know, if you're not careful, mm -hmm. you could end up like me. So you just take care and think. Um, and, and that's kind of the magic bullet approach of, of saying to people, look, you know, it, it, it only takes a second to, to change your life. So try and be more mindful. Um, and then a slightly better version of that are people like Jason that used to say things like, so, you know, if anything changes, if you feel uncomfortable, uh, stop. Take take a deep breath, count to five, think before you move. You know, it'll be a very it'll be an entry level, uh, and, and one of the ones that the unions, in particular unions in America, are not spectacularly fond of. Really. <laughs> you know, um, so that, then, the, the, I the, wonder the, if we have Dominic Cooper. <laughs> oh, well, they wouldn't. The dog wouldn't be very fond of that either. And then the second one, I think, is is kind of a, a version 
of uh, the stop approach, you know, famous by by Dupont, of course. Dupont. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's very much, uh, you know, it's okay to challenge. It's okay to be challenged. Um, some coaching, but 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 really a kind of quite paternal approach to, mm -hmm. to it. You know, based really on, on on that anchor. Yeah, it's okay to challenge. It's okay to be challenged. Um, and then moving into something like John Orman's uh, Sousa approach, which had a lot more an, uh, coaching involved and mm -hmm. then some analysis mm -hmm. um and then moving again really further and riffing off the work of people like deming and mm -hmm. i'm thinking of bst and tom Crowe here of course who came along and started using some of those techniques at safety you know i mean and the people at bst said he kind of literally thought i could apply this to safety and make a lot of money and was right um and saved an awful lot of lives in doing so by the way um in case that sounds a bit glib you know, so I, I, you know, so that's kind of six sigma safety in in my mind, mm -hmm. beginning yeah. now to em empower the workforce to analyse why things are happening, maybe some measurements, some feedback as well. So really, some 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 very strong methodologies now, um, and and then finally, of course, what I, what I consider the very best behavioural safety, which is you know obviously my stick, the thing that I that I think is key is is the learning approach. So I think. The very best behavioural safety programmes really start and end with analysis, and so it's, it's not observation and uh, and feedback and some analysis. It's analysis, some more analysis, maybe some coaching, maybe some discipline if, if required, um, and, if, and, and so on. So it, it's it's driven by the analysis, uh, which is coming very much from um, the work of people like Sydney Decker, mm -hmm. uh, James mm -hmm. Reason, um, in particular. You know where you're saying, look, you know, not, you know, HSG 48, uh, just culture. You know, when you look at it, 90% of what goes wrong seems to be people being triggered, set up to fail, if you like. So 90% of your efforts should be in understanding exactly how that's happening and what we can do about it. And so, so my my behavioural safety was very much based on behavioural root cause analysis teams, and the the top down bit, the management walk and talk based on why are you doing that or proactive questions like um, is there anything slow inconvenient or uncomfortable about doing this job safely and echoed very much in safety differently now you know we want you to be safe you want to be safe what you need you know so I, I think that reflects that, that, that too in your answer you just covered everything basically <laughs> so I asked the question <laughs> what is BPS and you covered all the elements in change well it was a difficult question you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in that case, I, I was reading that in one of your articles, you mentioned that I want to propose to stop calling it behavioral safety. So it's a it's a kind of a provoking question. So is it really about behavior? That's the question. And would, another yeah. comment coming from uh, uh, Scott Geller, Professor Scott Geller, so happy to have you with us. Another people-based safety, and I know yeah. that you have your own view on people-focused safety. So, if you could just sure. comment on that. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, obviously, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honour to have the, the man who coined the term "behavioural safety" listening to me wittering on uh, about what I think. Um, I, why, why walk away from the word uh, "behavioural safety"? Because nine times out of ten, if somebody comes up to you and says, I want to talk to you about your behavior, it's exactly. obvious. And it's not nice. Right? <laughs> yeah, and, and obviously Scott himself was all over that and came up with, you know, people-focused safety or people-based people, people -based safety. Um, but my problem is, is, is to with that, um, it's, it's, it's a nuanced issue really, but you've got the union saying, leave leave our guys alone sorry that's, that's sexist but you know what i mean leave our people yeah, alone yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um you know it's not about them it's about the environment they're in and i think using the expression people-based safety kind of only half deals with that you know I, i'd much rather talk about cultural safety okay, or, so or coming back again to holistic integrated approach yeah so them yeah. In yeah um yeah i'll talk about that however staying on that topic team so for the last 10 15 years many organizations developed implemented bbs approach and then they come to the point and they say we tried it it doesn't work or it's slowly dying and then the question is that's the question i kept asking 
I think, for the last 10 years. So we do have BPS, but it's just a tick box exercise, not anymore. It's just about numbers. So tell, could you elaborate on that? What do you do? Do you want to re-energize it to, or just let it die? Uh, Jen, Jenna, I missed a little bit of that question. You went a bit, you went a bit echoey and tinny, but I, I think I knew what you meant. And mm -hmm. and uh, in 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 short, you know, people who say we tried it, it didn't work. Well, a, what did they try? How well did they do it? How are they defining whether it worked or not, etc. You know, um, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> and, and so on. Uh, you know, and it worked quite well, and then it died off. Well, yeah. you know, if you, if I, I, again, I'm going to keep drawing it back and say it's just. Some of these behavioral techniques we have, observation and feedback is the obvious one. Measurement, goal setting sessions is another really useful technique in the right circumstances. Um, if, we, if we're saying, look, we're in a process of continuous improvement, you know, uh, Andrew Hopkins is worth quoting here. There's always mm -hmm. stuff going wrong. Mm -hmm. And even if there isn't today, there will be tomorrow when something changes a bit. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to be on top of that. And, and really, if you look at the Parker and Hudson model of, of world class culture, um, you know, really, world class is, is going from four to five, from proactive to, to excellent. You know, and, and, and world class is, as you nearly get there, you have to be striving and carrying on and carrying on. Because the second you say, well, we've done it now, you're just going to drift backwards. So, so you, know, you can't do a behavioral safety program. You have to have a behavioral approach to human error management um, that is ongoing and continuous. Um, and and is uh, it, it just it never ends, you know? It never ends. So so uh, people who, who try to see these things as magic bullets, if, if, if they try and do a magic bullet approach, well, they're, they're buggered from from the from the very beginning. But if they try and see it as a project, oh, you yeah. know, well, yeah. you know, again, project, it, it, initiative, yeah. whatever they call it. Uh, so deadlines, yeah, so absolutely. Well, measurement is a really good thing, you know. So, <laughs> so if you have an ongoing process of measurement and, and, and it just tails off and it becomes a tick box exercise and the data quality is poor and nobody attends the feedback sessions anymore and so on, you know, you could say, well, it just tailed off. But if you use measurement by, um, by saying, well, we've got a specific issue we want to look at, we're going to go the full Monty. We're going to measure it in advance. We're going to do all our stuff, analysis and, and high impact low contributions and so on. Some observations, some feedback, goal setting, maybe all that. And then we're going to see how we've got on. Then we're going to stop. You know, so it's really targeting methodologies at specific issues. So, you know, I if anybody who says it's tailed off isn't doing it right, I would argue. Absolutely. And it's also design issues and uh, some of the approaches, not evidence based, but just trying and trying. Uh, there's so many questions, Tim, we have in the chat, so I need to cover more, at least most of them. So, um, so we have a question. Do you think that today there are many that try and shortcut the system and aim for the answer before analysis has been completed? Basically, that uh, yeah. Been, yeah. So this is this is just for what I know. I'm a very windy Welshman, and <laughs> I talk too much, but I can be quick about this one. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so I think uh, the same comment coming from uh, uh, Mal. Let me show you. I think he continues talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I, I mean, to, to address that in a bit more length, uh, Malcolm, uh, thanks for the question. And, you know, you, you, you find so many organisations that are looking for a magic bullet, you know. You know, we, we've got a behavioural issue. Uh, you know, maybe the safety wave is applying. You know, the historical best ever levels, but there, there's a, like a residue of accidents that seem to wave around in a, in, in, in a, in a drain, as it were. Um, and they're all about people doing daft things. So clearly it's a behavioural issue. Uh, so we need a behavioural safety programme, you know, and, and, and they see it as a sort of a magic bullet. We'll get a behavioural safety programme in, doesn't matter which one, any, any good one will do. Um, of course it'll fail, you know, it's, uh, it's you, you have to think things through and tailor things a bit, bit more intelligently than that. Yeah, and we're coming slowly to the second part of our interview, Tim, because you mentioned that BBS is not a project. Uh, that has a starting date, deadline, 
and it's not only about numbers. So share and please elaborate on your approach to BBS about holistic, integrated. And I would like to talk about three things that you mentioned in your book. It's about sure. systems, it's about leadership, and it's about listening and learning. So oh, you can okay. just go around all those elements. Okay, the first, the first thing to say, Gina, is, is actually behavioral safety can be a project, you know? Um, there are lots of fabulous techniques that fit project of behavioral root cause analysis teams is the obvious one. We've got a project with people and plant interaction in that factory. Let's go and do a behavioral safety program that has got a lot of classic methodologies in it, you know, and then we'll stop and we'll have improved it and, and it'll all be based on design and change and it's done. You know, so it could be a project, but it needs to be a project that is very tailored at a specific issue. I mean, as part of a holistic approach, I I, I think, and, and the, the well, the holistic approach, you know, the, the three elements I think of a of a strong culture. That the, the first one is, of course, that um, anything that impacts on people's behaviour at the front line and causes people to perform in a risky way and therefore run the risk of getting hurt or getting hurt and getting killed, um, is is behavioural safety. So if you have a really poor safety management system. If you have poor quality inductions, poor quality training, you have limited resources, too much time pressure, a whole raft of really difficult clients, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Strategic decisions around those will impact on frontline behavior and risk. So you should be looking at that. So if I can give you an example, um, I had a client that was very ac acquisitive. They would buy lots of different companies and they were growing at a fantastic rate and that was great uh, for us uh, professionally but they bought a waste disposal company in the uk and when they actually started running it they looked into it and they said we can't make a profit doing this safely actually the, the custom and practice is you have to cut corners and lots of them to get the, the rounds done and make money you know it, to do it right the cuts are going to go from a profit to a loss so they mm -hmm. got out ah that's behavioral safety <laughs> you know, i would argue you know at, at that highest strategic level any any decision and certainly if your training's poor if your safety management system is poor and badly integrated uh all, all those things and there'll always be weaknesses in that we're always making strategic mistakes and planning things badly and resourcing things badly and not training people properly so Working at that, I think, is 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 base one. Obviously, it is. You know, you should, if, if there's things to be done, then you need to do them. Um, the, the the leadership piece, if you'd like me to address that, I, I, I think yeah. that's 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 pretty straightforward as well. We all know that transformational, empowering leadership, sometimes they call it servant leadership these days, uh, is better than transactional leadership. Um, usually, not always, you know, if you have poor quality workers in a very high risk environment, you want to be quite transactional, actually, exactly. <laughs> you know, but mostly we want to be doing things like praising rather than criticizing. We want to be coaching, certainly, rather than telling, because you, you develop all that internal motivation and intrinsic um, motivation to be safe. And Scott, in particular, talks very well about this, of course. You know, you want to be giving really good feedback, and, and Dominic Cooper is really strong on, on feedback and, and the power of good quality feedback. You know, you, you want to be remembering that you're leading by example at all times, whether you want to be or not. You know, so all, all that, all that transformational le leadership stuff um, has a huge impact. But again, it has a huge impact on the culture, because if you're treating people that way, then they're going to be much more positive and switched on and energized. And you want positive, switched on, energized people because they mm -hmm. tend to have fewer accidents. Not, not always, because positive, energized, switched on people get stuck in, and people who get stuck in have accidents too. So it's all a bit complicated. But, uh, but you know, you you you, uh, you know you, you know what I mean. Uh, and, and then the final bit, uh, of course, is is the learning piece. Learning, um, and, <laughs> and that, that that's for for me, it's the absolute essence of of anything. Um, so you know, if you if you've read. Uh, uh, is it uh, a Carol Dweck's mind, mindset? Uh, it's all yeah. about four million copies. That's all about learning. I think the best book written about safety in 30 years by Matthew Saeed, um, contrasting aviation with um, healthcare, uh, black box thinking. It's 
all about learning. Uh, you know, the psychological, you were psychologically safe organizations at Amy Edmondson. Yeah. It's, it's all the same thing, which is look, you know, we, we're fallible. And the more complex things get, so you can Sidney Decker's book uh, about you know complexity of, of, of drift to failure, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. um, things are really complicated, and they're always going to go wrong. And the thing that distinguishes the best from the worst, and this by which you know they they mean uh, whole countries, uh, uh, societies, uh, species, um, is the quality and objective analysis of understanding what's happening and why, so you can respond effectively to it. Mm -hmm. So just let me summarize them. So we're talking about holistic integrated approach mm -hmm. based on the systems, ensuring that our management system works. It's about leadership, transformational, if needed, transactional coaching, praising, feedback, communication, leading by example. And the last piece that you consider the most significant, it's about learning, proactiveness, and uh, I would like to take some more questions. Thank you for that, team. And we're going to continue our discussion, but just several comments from uh, the chat. So again, comment from uh, uh, Professor Scott Geller. The missing link in most less than optimal BBS processes is one-to-one -one coaching about the safe and at-risk observations from the employee behavioral checklist and um oh, okay uh, do you know I, I i hate to disagree with a great man but i i don't think so i think the okay. missing link is i mean that certainly is a hugely important thing to be doing um but i think even more important is the curious why question you know why did you do that why is that happening what do you need from me and the proactive question of people who are in vans, for example, who you cannot observe because they're peripatetic workers, you know, is there anything slow, inconvenient or uncomfortable about doing that job safely and, and healthily? You know, because if the answer to that is yes, then um, there's something to be learned and something to be done. You know, ABC analysis, you know, temp or temptation ABC analysis. analysis, yes, yeah. analysis. So, so I, I think the absolute core of it is the, the an an analytical approach to what's happening. And, and the more proactively you can do it, the better. Because, of course, if you're asking the question why of something you've seen that's gone wrong, you've got to check yourself and make sure you ask it curiously, not aggressively, or the person on the receiving end is, you know, is going to get upset with you because they're going to feel blamed, even if they deserve to be blamed. We, we don't like being blamed, even if we deserve to be blamed. So um, so, so I I think the missing link is is the, the analysis piece. Uh, yes, I think uh, I do remember reading about your example about the drunk fellow that fell in the night. Oh, bar. yeah, no, that was a really interesting case study. I'll, I'll mm -hmm. expand on that. They, it, was, it was an investigation. Um, we were asked to comment on it. And, and what had happened was somebody had fallen down some stairs at a nightclub and died. It was a steep set of stairs. And, and the, the worry was that they, they'd been a bit bolshy, they were drunk. So, and the worry was that the bouncers had taken offence and somebody had given him a bit of a helping hand. Um, so they didn't have any CCTV. So they said, right, OK, um, you know, let's, uh, let, let's, let's look into this. But when you looked at the stairs... Huh, the stairs were steep. They were hard. Some of the stairs would have different heights, so you know, air steps were, were easy mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. The handrail was just decorative. It was integrated to the wall, so you couldn't really hold it even if you needed to. Um, clearly, it was, it was dimly lit, um, mm -hmm. and it was really late, and a lot of the people using those stairs going down at night, because it was an up, upstairs nightclub and you went down out, a lot of them were drunk as a skunk. So, so when we looked into it, we said, I'm not sure you need to be the he fell, <laughs> you know, while he was pushed. I wouldn't worry about being being pushed. I would worry about somebody falling down tomorrow. And they also people fall all the time. In fact, we've had two fatalities in the last five years. Oh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know maybe, maybe proactively predicting that yeah. that might happen would be useful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we have another comment. I think it would. It's rather comment than a question let me read it interesting you started off mentioning about unions okay somebody take it 
Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, I, I I can uh, I I once did all the union reps of um, uh, the steelworks. I forget what they were called when they, they, you know the steelworks. I mean, but mm -hmm. I, I, I can't remember the name of them. About sixty in the room, and two or three of them were really hoping that I get torn limb from limb. But of course, you know, I was talking about culture. I was talking about analysis. I was talking about empowerment, and I uh, didn't get any negative feedback at all. I I find the problem with this is a some behavioral safety practitioners do focus too much on the person um as, I, as i've already articulated um and the second one i i think in it, it you know I, I'm, I'm thinking of some magazines that i that i contacted and said i'd love to do an article um i'd love to do a debate with you no not happening you know um and, and there's that I, so so one of the problems i've had is people won't debate you yeah People won't let you put articles in the magazines. They just say all behavioral safety is the work of the devil. You know, um, they did have myself and Dominic and, and Scott shot and Dawn um, with, with, with no no cause to appeal. I, I, I you know, so so what, what are the reasons for, for, write, for writing the book and giving it a, 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 a provocative title was to try and start a debate and say, look, you know, <laughs> good behavioral safety has got absolutely nothing that anybody in the union could possibly criticize and when you get the chance to articulate that they agree with you of course they do yeah. although i did have one guy once who said yeah but you're not doing it i'm doing it because <laughs> then my work is not yours so sod off <laughs> if, if i if, if yeah if i share my experience it happened once they when they unions they were opposing the bps but the reason was that they brought them very late on board so they were just i think they were just told that we're implementing bbs from tomorrow so i think that sometimes it's not the issue with people or unions or groups of peers or colleagues but it's the the program itself the approach we take the design uh, the implementation stage uh, would you agree with me no absolutely I'm a case study actually of, of a guy who, who has worked for me on and off for a quarter of a century now uh, the first day I met him, I was working at the Atomic Weapons Establishment in um, in Aldermaston. Um, and he was sent along by, we said to the unions, send some people along. They were really welcome to come on the course. And he, he says, uh, you know, very clearly, my brief was really clear to come along and get some bullets to, to make sure we could blow you out the water. And so, so when I went back, I said, actually, this is all good stuff. This. <laughs> said, I wasn't very popular. <laughs> but that was okay because he came to work for us soon afterwards. So... <laughs> Uh, I really like this comment uh, from Bernard who talks about whatever we call it, we need to care for people, listen, engage, involve, provide feedback and treat them with respect. And I think it's applicable not only to BBS, but in general, the culture of safety that we're developing. And yeah, and, and uh, apart, apart from just agreeing with that, Jeanette, if, if I can, 100%, I know later on we're going to talk about a culture of care and, mm -hmm. and the overlap and interlink between issues like fatigue and mental health and, yeah. and frontline behavior and accidents. So, you know, and, and, and all that well being based stuff. So. Yeah. So, my next question will be around uh, human error and mental well being. But first of all, before I do that, I would like to show you a comment from uh, Professor Scott Geller. That I think relates to your comment on asking the questions why, 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 and finding the root cause and uh, behavioral analysis. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when I said I disagree with Scott, of course, I mean, obviously, we agree a lot, an awful lot more than we disagree. But if anybody's in here, what 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 they want is some discourse, isn't there? And and it sounds like it sounds like we're disagreeing. It makes for a much more interesting viewing. So. Uh, before we jump into the next question, uh, we have a question from Wins Butler. Uh, I think it's going to take. Yeah, hi Wins, hi Wins. So, as a lifelong union activist, the reason unions struggle with BBS simply is used by employers, owners, and bosses as a convenient means to blame workers. Tim knows that. 
I, I, um, it, it depends. To be fair, Vince, it depends on the on the company. And if I could give you again, if I could give you a case study, you know, um, of where that just wasn't true, uh, because obviously it is true a lot. And we're talking about the magic bullet merchants and and people who say, "Give me them for half a day. I'll I'll train them to do this. If they can walk through a, uh, they can walk on hot coals. They can do anything." Is mm -hmm. is the classic one I, I saw back in the day, a company called Chep UK. Um, and what had happened was they had a, they, they fixed pallets for a living, you know, the wooden pallet, they break, you have to repair them and so on. It's a tough, tough job. There's air powered nail guns, forklift trucks, there's all sorts, you know, it's, it's, it's dangerous. And they killed somebody and they killed somebody um, in Avonmouth and the managing director and the operations director, Vince McGurk and Neil Steeper are their names. Goodness. I don't know. I've I don't know if I've ever managed to remember that. <laughs> anyway, they they went to the funeral, um, and this was all oh, just twenty five years ago plus now. They went to the funeral, and they were so moved and, and and upset by it that they said, "Right, we're not doing this again." I mean, as ever, often it's a response to a tragedy that, that drives genuine improvement. Mm -hmm. And they said, "What well, we saw this guy talking about behavioural safety." You know, in um, in London at a conference, that was me, and they, they called me in, and we said, and I was very naive at the time, so I said, right, oh, we got behavioural safety. We're gonna have measurement. We're gonna have feedback sessions. We're gonna have goal setting and charts everywhere. It's you know, what, what you would consider a pretty ambitious set of methodologies, really. Um, and, and they just ensured that it happened. You know, they put a guy called Dave Fannings. Oh, what a what a, what a man, ex rugby league professional, and they they, they put it through all the factories in, in the group. Mm -hmm. And some of the factory managers, as you can imagine, just gave it lip service until Dave turned up, <laughs> and then okay. they stopped giving it lip service. You know, and they, and they uh, it's just in, so it's in the book, uh, the, the case study. They they cut accident rates to a tenth of what they had been, um, and and there were no unions there or, or anything. But the management used a bit, they wanted to hurt fewer people, and they genuinely meant it. Um, and and you know and. I remember one of the best comments I ever had. I was I was doing a lot of the work myself in those days, and I was in a factory saying, "Oh, you must volunteer. It's going to be fantastic." And um, I remember a guy at the front row says, "I'll volunteer for you." He said, "But by, by by the way, can I ask you one question?" And I said, "Yeah, yeah, of course you can." He said, "This all sounds fantastic, but this afternoon, do I have to go back in there and bash some more pallets for a living?" <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> That's true. I think, uh, yeah, uh, absolutely great answer, team. I, I believe that uh, talking about the wins comment is we are just coming back to those three basics: leadership, system, culture, and learning. And so, and the motives and the why do we do that? Um, there is a question. Uh, from uh, Nilesh Kamatkar, sorry if I pronounce it wrong, is BPS for workers only in industry? It means heavy industry, yeah? No, um, absolutely not, because I think the best BBS methodologies, what you need from me to be, to be safe and healthy, um, apply everywhere, up to and including things like call centers, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, yeah. classical yeah. behavioural safety is not mm -hmm. get, not getting yourself into hospital, but there's lots of ways to get into hospital yeah. from, through work. Yeah. Post office. I've seen it in the post offices. I've seen it in the hospitals. So, in the schools. So, educational system, universities. So, I think this is is not about just the program. It's an approach, care analyzing finding the root causes thank you um i think uh, continuing our debate with vince we have a comment from mal okay uh, let me read it i helped set up one of the first bbs programs at johnson and johnson the management were very on board along with most of the workforce two-thirds of which were polish <laughs> we use dual language in all our published materials. Uh, coming back to the design and implementation state. Um, did you finish reading, Tim? I, I did. I, yeah, yeah. That, that's um, yeah. I, that, 
I, I, you know, that's a, that's a comment rather than a question, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Unless unless I'm misreading that, but yes. So yeah. uh, I like this question. Really like this question. How can BBS improve the safety culture in a company? Uh, uh. <laughs> We've been asked that many, many times. Simple question, complex answer. <laughs> Uh, yeah oh, well it's about horses and carts isn't it and yeah, which which yeah. comes first um i mean firstly what you know a, a definition of culture is the way we typically work around here the way we typically behave also uh, how we typically think the assumptions we make um but but certainly how you know obviously the key element here for this discussion is how we typically behave around here so your culture is your behavior really um, so if you change your behavior, you are automatically changing your culture to, to an extent. But um, if you, but, but that, so, so that's, that's the positive piece of the answer. The negative piece is if you think a simplistic behavioral safety program plugged into a factory is going to change the culture of, of indifference to worker safety, yeah, you, you're struggling. You're really struggling. Because, you know, that will be the magic bullet stuff, you know, um, and that will be management probably having the mindset will train them all up and they'll have a behavioral safety program and they'll have fewer accidents and that will be less of a headache, you know, and, and that's that's not changing the culture. That's not changing the culture. Uh Thank you, Tim. Fully agree on that. Fully agree. So it's it's just so much embedded and integrated that sometimes you don't know what is improving first and what it helps first. Uh, there is a comment from uh, Gary Monaghan. Sorry if I pronounce it <laughs> in a different way. Do you use behavior change modules that is TPP when implementing in PPS? What, 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 Lots of words. What I uh, could you could you specify what you mean by COMB and TPB. I think I know what they mean, but I'm not certain. I don't want to make a fool of myself by going off in the wrong direction. So, so many abrogations sometimes during our chat. Yeah. So I'm always worried. Oh my God, I don't know what it means. Um, yeah, but I think the second part, lots of words resonate with me when talking about BBS, but few from me care, trust, engagement, full agree. Oh, can I, can I, while I'm waiting for the, the definition of combi and TPB, um, the, the yes. trust, is, trust is an interesting one. Um, I don't know if Dom's with us tonight, but back in the day, we both had a colleague called Carrie Cooper, who was very much the king of, of kind of stress. You know, if anybody was on TV talking about stress, it was Carrie. And mm -hmm. Carrie would say the number one metric an organization should look for is the level of trust in the workforce. You know, simple measures like how many times do they say we rather than you, you know, so is it us and them or is it we and and, and so on. Um, and, you know, uh, Carrie says that trust begets everything. But I think some of the stuff we're talking about actually is more important. I don't think trust is the number one metric. I think good quality, caring leadership and good quality, objective, analytical, respectful learning about people's realities um, is even more important than trust because if you get those right you beget high levels of trust absolutely agree to, to try and go back to the, the the central tenant here it's all about talking to people and treating them with respect and elvising it you know walk a mile in a man's shoes before you judge them absolutely i fully agree and uh, Question, so unusual to say a question from Sony. <laughs> it's so unusual for me. But there is a question from Sony. Do you think we're going to have more humanistic uh, as a result of the COVID? Right. Okay, and this, this is taking, taking me off into the area I've been working in for the last two or three years. And, and uh, the, the short answer is yes, for certain, um, as we become more aware of long COVID issues and, and just how fragile we are and all that cosmic shock stuff as, as, as you, we realize how, how how interlinked we are and so on um mm -hmm. but, but even even years ago the whole thing really especially in the uk and in uk construction of, of all places it was it was a core, core element a move towards mental health and well-being properly not not as again you know bikes and bananas just like more quality behavioral safety bananas in reception and a subsidized gym membership what more do you need 
you know, um, well, I, I, could, I could do with you not treating me like a robot idiot would be a start and talking to me as if I'm six. That would that would help too, you know. So so we were already moving, I think, in, in, in towards mental health and well-being as a key element of a holistic approach to, to a caring culture, you know, with not hurting people today, uh, a key element of that. Um, and, and certainly that's been accelerated by by the whole COVID issue and 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 really, uh, you know, I, I so five years ago I had an interesting call from somebody who said, look, we've just switched off a major airport. It's cost us trillions. Mm -hmm. um, we have to have the best behavioural safety program known to man, and um, we have to have it tomorrow. So so we, we went and we had a look at the the approach. So we're not really after behavioural safety. You're after human error management. We want people to make fewer mistakes. In this case, it was pressing the wrong button. Um, and, and so to do that, we need to take a holistic approach to the individual. And that in, so we, we incorporated uh, mental health, uh, fatigue issues. Um, certainly we incorporated things like soft skills for the management, which is all that empowering and engaging piece, Dale, Dale Carnegie basically, and all that stuff about catching a person doing something right, praise being 20 times as effective as criticism. So that, that, whole, that whole piece, um, and, and, but it very explicitly incorporated mental health um, and and well-being, because you know I I I've tried to argue recently that the people who are struggling, you know, as in having a really bad day, are more likely to have accidents than people who aren't. You know, so um, uh -huh. and I'll articulate why in, in in a second. So the the answer to that is yes, but it was already happening. Are you planning to extend your book, Tim? Uh, ah, you no, I'm glad you asked me that, and this isn't a set up. Um, yeah. the, the behavioral safety, I mean, you know, as I said, behavioral safety to me now is a subset of, of what we should be doing anyway, which is just trying to minimize human error and maximize excellence. Um, and, and this, my, my best selling book, as it were, the one that sold the most copies is this one. And it's about having a conversation very much on the lines that I've been articulating tonight. And in a couple of months, that comes out as a new version called in Talking Health and Safety, which which incorporates all, all, all the stuff about mental health and, and well-being as well. Uh, it comes out in November, I think. November this year. I think, I think it's November, yeah. So. Okay. And so if I could just give you some examples of that, if, if, if I could. You yes, know, sure. it, you know, mm -hmm. from, from the world of mindset, you know, we, we learn from the world of safety. If you ask the question, why did you switch off with any level of aggression, which is, you know, pre preset, deep water mm -hmm. and fiber alpha, you know, people will be defensive. And that could be a, this is a career defining answer coming up here. If you ask the question, um, you know, why did you think it was safe to switch back on? You know, what you, you, the assumption coming across there is, well, you, you had a good reason for it. You've got 20 years of offshore operational experience. You're not going to have done it for no reason. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But it, it sets you up to give the same technical answer. Well, this happened. We thought this caused it, so we tried this, and that seems to be working. Um, so we, we know that questions can be really key. And from the world of, of well-being now, it, it's, it's very similar, you know. So, um, you know, people's mind would say, look, whatever you do, don't say you've got to be tough to work here. You know, because that's putting the onus back on the individual again. It's much, much better to say, you know, despite our very best efforts to try and set people up to succeed, sometimes you have to be pretty resilient to work here. It's just coming at it from a different angle. The one is about the individual and the other one is about trying as best you can, given the circumstances your, your, your industry is in, to set people up to succeed and to flourish. But sometimes... That's hard, you know, and and so there's there's lots of transfer transferable skills and, and knowledge, you know, um, and techniques that, that we can apply to, to mental health and, and, and safety. So I mean, in, in my book, I mean, the essence of talking health and safety is introduce yourself by saying, "How are you tonight, Jeanette?" You know, and you say, "I'm fine, thank you," because everybody says that. Then we have a conversation and we we work together. We develop a little bit of rapport, and then I say, "But well, by the way." how are you you know and the second time you ask it you're much more likely to get some sort of a 
uh, a, a true Definitely. response. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. you know, so if I think, again, the, the data centers I was talking about, you know, we cannot have a data center crash. It's just cost of fortune. Um, we were, we're talking to um, the, the CEO. I, I visited a data center, uh, two actually that, that morning, and then we were in the pub and we were chatting and I said, well, he said, oh, if somebody falls down the stairs, can you imagine the cost if, if a lone worker fell down the stairs? And I said, well, look, you know, um, I wouldn't worry about them falling down the stairs. You know, there's something like 31 times more likely to throw themselves down the stairs. The ratio of suicides in the UK to of working age people to fatalities, 30, 31 to 1. And uh, really, you know, is that, is that right? So, yeah. So, well, uh, my workers are all right. No, they're all happy. I said, well, I spoke to one this morning. He was pretty happy. Well, how do you know? So, well, I asked him where he was, and he said, "Well, you know." So, what do you mean? Well, yeah, that doesn't sound great. Well, I, I, what I found out was that this guy was sleeping on his friend's couch, was drinking more alcohol than he had since he was eighteen, was not in a good place at all. And the CEO said, "Well, how did you find all this out?" So, well, I asked him if he was all right, and then I kind of listened to his answer, and I picked up on the fact that it didn't sound very convincing. <laughs> it's not really rocket science, is it? You know, um, <laughs> so, you know, because uh, you know, I, I, we all do it all the time, don't we? We ask the question, "You are right," and you get the answer. I'm fine, thank you. Know, thank God for that. I was a bit worried there for a while, but I'll crack on and let you crack on yourself. Yeah, but it's not about the question itself, right? It's about the way you ask it. If you mean it, if you, if you and the direction it. you're asking it from, and the mindset from which you're asking it. Yeah. yeah, and asking the right question. It's not only BPS, it's just anything, whether you do incident investigation, if you're engaging your workers in risk assessment, uh, it's mental health, etc. So, I absolutely agree. And uh, recently, I read the book, The Code, and it talks a lot about belonging. And uh, I think it's uh, maybe next time we'll talk about belonging and the emotional intelligence. And I think uh, I was reading um, your article about that in leadership, it's 85%. The message is through the body and the uh, body language and the voice, and it's only 15% yeah. the words itself. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's, the, that's the classic ratio for any, any, yeah. any leadership course, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's, if, if I had any, if I had any uh, attitude about me, but when we when we do that bit of the training course, you know, it's not what you say; it's the way that you say it. We we be playing banana armor and uh, you know and all that sort of stuff. But uh, if anybody remembers banana armor, it ain't what you do; it's the way that you do it. <laughs> uh, uh, Tim, uh, there's so many comments, positive comments, thanking you. And, you said um, we don't get five. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, tell us more about your book. I mean, the definitive, definitive guide to BBS. Uh, tell us a little bit more about this book. Why should we buy it? Why should we read it? Um, well, what, my book? The, the definitive yeah, guide? Yeah. <laughs> yes, your book, obviously. No, no, don't, don't buy it. Don't buy it. Um, it, it it's uh, uh, Really, don't buy it. Buy Matthew Said's Black Box Thinking instead um, and, and read all about just how vitally important a really good approach to learning is uh, and then just take my advice that you need to apply that through behavioral safety methodologies like um the, the, the best one for me is it's always the best one is is the behavioral root cause analysis team you know so so what we do is we get some volunteers from the shop floor and we say look what are the problems here you know it could be in the yard or, or, or whatever what are the what are the what's going to hurt people and they'll say, well, if somebody was going to get badly hurt, this would this was how this would be how. I think Todd Conklin would call it a pre-accident investigation, isn't it? Um, so, well, okay, that's good. Thanks for that. Now, no names, no pack drill. Why would it happen, and what can we do about it? Um, or management are out there, and if you can come up with anything that is a high impact, low cost solution, it's done. Yeah. You know? um, it's a very, very practical advice, team, And I think so many people will be so happy to listen to this podcast and this video, watch it again. Thank you so much. But, team, I know that you're being very modest and I've read the, so many books of yours. And despite you saying, don't buy this book, I would insist that you need to get that book 
the definitive guide for BPS because it does cover all the theories, practical examples, case studies, everything, the principles that underpin the uh, behavioral-based safety system. So I do insist, team, that we, you do get the book because it's something that you will find it useful. Um, yes, it is. So well, yeah, so, thank, thank, thank you ever so kind. That's just, you, that's ever so kind. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I Jenny's just said it's about your book. So yes, ab absolutely. But uh, if um, if you if you've got this far in the in, in the po podcast without without switching me off, um, then uh, then then presumably you think I'm talking sense, unless you're just saving up a real killer question. That mm -hmm. is, in which case, please buy the book. Um, please, oh, buy lots of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never stop reading, never stop reading. Um, I, I don't want to leave anyone behind. So, uh, Tim, so we have a question from Ashish Duvedi, BBS audits. And so we hear it very often, audits, BBS audits, set a level of safety culture in our industry. I think that's a comment rather than... Uh, uh, I do can you give you a nice interesting case study, though. Uh, uh, yes, uh, please. Uh, uh, that. If I can, I'm trying to think of the more interesting things. Uh, you know, obviously, the, the the classic is you know is a methodology that we we still sell as as a company is be behavioural benchmarking. You know, so we'll say right on a, on a dock maybe uh, in Rotterdam to pick an example. Um, they'll they'll say we have a slight problem with the interaction between the straddle carrier trains, mm -hmm. the little vans that buzz around, and pedestrians. Okay. So okay, we'll define some behavioural safety uh, issues, like you know cars and straddle carrier trains being within two seconds of colliding with each other, that's too close by, by half that. Bit of distraction and you're in real trouble. You know, drop a cigarette, uh, pick up your phone, uh, just have a, mm -hmm. you know, a, a fade out. Um, and then we'll go and measure it and we'll see just how safe it is. Um, and here are your figures. Uh, and, and, you know, it's nowhere near as safe as you want it to be. And sooner or later, two of these things are going to collide and, and it could be really bad, you know. And, and uh, in this particular instance, it was a, it was a, it was a docks uh, three three years ago, uh, and and they had killed people. And so well, of course you're killing people. Look at your look at your scores. You're about thirty percent compliant. You know it's seventy percent non-compliant. That's lots of unsafe behaviour. But but the interesting one I was I was going to to tell you about was the um, a, a, a nuclear facility, um, and and the the spy basically the the, the chief spy said I want um, a, a behavioural measure for security. Uh, um, because I think, you know, the, the rule is if you find somebody inside the wire, people, you should never see somebody inside the wire you're not expecting to see. You should have been briefed, yeah. right? mm -hmm. you know, should have been told that morning, today you might come across X and Y and they're doing this. So he said, right, if, if my compliance levels are less than 90 percent, um, I'm going to be a really unhappy man. And uh, so we, we, we got people and we got people to make, you know, today, have you seen anybody? And if you, if you did, um, were you expecting to see them? Um, I probably shouldn't tell you the compliance levels, but he wasn't very happy at all. Okay. And uh, they, they weren't anywhere near 90 percent. Um, and uh, so you, these behavioral methodologies, you can you can apply to to anybody. You know, and good data is good data. Just so long as it is good data. <laughs> good data is not only statistic. Just for someone who is listening, it's not just a tick boxes at numbers. <laughs> um, yes, and there are actually uh, in in the book, the what the one thing actually that is in the book that uh, is is a, is, a, is a chapter, uh, a short chapter on how to see if your behavioural data is of good quality or not. Tells you how to do it. Integrate the reliability checking. So. You see, Tim, I managed to, <laughs> to make you promote your own books. <laughs> yes, it is. It's, it's not bad that people say that it's quite useful because there are an awful lot of behavioral safety charts uh, and, and, and pie, pie charts and, and graphs that have really poor quality data on them that if you tried to validate it in any way, um, you would be mortified. So, um yeah, the trouble is, and it, it, you know, uh, if you do do a proper rate of reliability check, you get mortified and you realise that actually the amount of effort you need to put in to get the data back up to scratch is colossal. And at, at that point, a lot of management teams, in my experience, can get really quite stressed. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. So anyway, that's why it's quite yeah. like. Yeah. Continue telling about it. It's not only about the numbers, but validity. <laughs> <laughs> happy to, Malcolm. I'm really very happy to. <laughs> um, okay, Tim, last five minutes. So, any closing notes? Let me just uh, let me just summarize what has been covered today. Oh goodness. Uh, what is BBS? What is not BBS? We covered practical aspects. It's about holistic integrated approach. And it's about systems. Deming cycle, your training, your competence, your communication, your management system, your SSWs, etc. It's about leadership, preferably transformational. It's about praising feedback, uh, uh, walk your talk, it's about leading by example, it's about caring, trust. It's about Don't learning. Don't forget coaching in that list. Coaching is probably the, the key word in there. So, And yeah. coaching. Learning. So learning and proactiveness as the key element of your behavioral approach. We talked about the challenges and the success factors of any behavioral system. And obviously, we did talk about mental health and your book. We managed to promote your book, Tim. Okay. That's I'm so happy. So any closing notes, Tim? Anything I missed from the summary? No, no, not, not, not at all. I, I think that the, the, one, the one thing I thought would, would, would come up, um, which is a hot topic, um, is the whole issue now as we come out of COVID um, and long COVID in particular, brain fog um and, and and all that and fatigue uh and, and, and mental health you know uh thank you tony <laughs> it's very kind of you um uh is is the issue between mental health and accidents and it's it's, it's controversial and it's complex because you know some some people so for example uh you know people who are feeling blue a lot of people who are feeling blue have learned that by being nice to others pro-social, above the line behaviors, citizenship behaviors, all the stuff we want can make them feel better. But um, as, a, as a rule, the evidence seems to suggest that people who are struggling contribute less to a, a, a positive culture uh, and are more likely to have accidents and, and, and for three reasons. Uh, the first one is they're much more likely to be distracted. So situational mm -hmm. awareness goes down. Um, mm -hmm. the second one is they're much more likely to be fatalistic um, and, and the trouble with fatalism, of course, is you're not working Heinrich's triangle to, to deliver the, the amount of um, uh, to deliver the amount of luck that you deserve. You know, you just got to cross in your fingers. And the third thing, of course, people who are really struggling can can be distracted. They can be grumpy. They can make bad decisions. They cannot want to engage. They can be quite antisocial. So they can actually kind of create risk around them as as they go. You know. Um, and, and, for, and so it's been quite controversial and it's been really interesting because of course insurance companies and we've been working with a very big insurance company said what's going to happen next um are there going to be more accidents because of covid and because of any any mental health issue following covid uh, and you know the the research suggests yes yes there is there is going to be an increase in accidents um uh because of those factors so uh so you know, uh, as, so uh, so in in summary, if you're really trying to manage your risk around individuals, you do need a holistic approach that encompasses health, mental health, fatigue, well-being, engagement, empowerment, uh, as well as holding a handrail and putting your PPE on, and and looking both ways before you cross the road. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So. Thank you so much, Tim. I'm so honored and so happy that yeah, we had. The, I was waiting for our discussion on BPS, and uh, I would like to thank also all our listeners, all our audience. Oh. Uh, yeah, there's this <laughs> I always, I, I'm still it's in the long, uh, debate. Accident. And 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 Scott corrects me every time, and uh, he's right to do so. So I'll, yeah. Bang to right. Yeah, he got Special me right thanks. at the end. <laughs> Special <laughs> thanks also goes to Sony, Sony Gopal and the stream team. And of course, uh, 
uh, Professor Scott Geller. Thank you so much, team. I'm looking forward to get your book. I'm looking forward to the new book that comes in November this year. And uh, just stay safe. And remember, every Tuesday, 7 p.m. UK, we just hear Red Risk just to connect, share, and learn. Have a peaceful evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you, anybody Thank you. who's stuck with us this far. Thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching that live event. If you want to be notified of future live events, head over to our website. There's a form on there, hit the subscribe button and I'll update you whenever live events come up. I promise you, no spam. And finally, we do have a YouTube channel. It's just simply Red Risks. Please subscribe and help us. Let's connect, share and learn. Thanks.